Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Love Fruit podcast. And today's guest is Victoria Everett St. John. And um, Victoria, I heard about a number of years ago, actually, from uh, a video that was posted online. I think it might have been an interview with uh, a short interview with Durian Rider, actually. And it might have taken place at a food and sport retreat or maybe the Woodstock Fruit Festival or somewhere like that. And she has a very yeah. interesting story to tell about her uh, health journey with, um, with 80-10-10 or on a raw vegan style diet. Um, so Victoria, would you like to tell us a bit more about yourself and in, in, in introduction to yourself? Oh, uh, yes. I started this diet in November of 2006. And uh, when I was 34 years old and now I'm 48 and it completely changed my life, changing my diet, uh, totally transformed me into a whole new person with a whole new life. And I'm very grateful. And you were, at some point, you had the nickname the Crazy Banana Lady. Yes, and I have a website that is still linked. If you type in Crazy Banana Lady, it will link you to my website. I since have changed the name to Embracing Your Joy uh, because I found that more fitting with where I'm at now. <laughs> so. Sure, sure. So what, where did it start off for you? Were you brought up on a, on a healthy diet or a vegan diet or anything like that? No, I was brought up uh, on a horrible diet. And as children, it was on payday, you feast on as much junk food as the parents bought until it's all gone. And then you live on ramen noodles and saltine crackers the rest of the month. And then, and I was very sick as a child. I have, I have a right leg that was almost completely burned with third degree burns when I was a baby. Jeez. And I was on antibiotics for years and years and years. And I constantly had pneumonia and bladder infections. And I was very sick as a child and it continued on through my adulthood, uh, adding on mental illness that hit in my teenage years. Um, mm -hmm. And so I just got sicker and sicker until at the age of four, I was living off of cigarettes, Pepsi, and fast food. And I was so Hello? I don't tell you about by Kevin Trudeau, which isn't, doesn't promote a raw food diet, but it does say don't eat fast food. Eat more fruits and vegetables. Don't eat processed food. Eat organic food. And so I started to do that, and I started to feel a little better. And through that, more information came to me until I was shown read something about eating raw food because of the living enzymes. And so I decided I would try that. And I did it for one day and I thought it was miserable. Mm. <laughs> that fruit was not half as good as my Pepsi. <laughs> and uh, all, all I knew was apples, oranges, and bananas. And, and But after one day, I woke up the next morning feeling better than I remember feeling in years. And I knew I had my answer. Yeah, so you said you said something, maybe I didn't catch this right, but it sounded like you said at the age of four that your diet was Coca-Cola, fast food, and cigarettes. No, at the age of 34. All right, sorry. <laughs> good, um, good you caught that. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that's interesting. You're talking about the book, um, the Kevin Trudeau book, seven, um, The Natural Cures They Don't Want You to Know About, because that's also a book that Robbie Barbaro told me that he he found years ago and that kind of spurred his interest in, in natural cures, natural health. Very nice. Yes, I'm amazed that it came to me through where I was. The answer came to me. I was laying in bed and I watched TV all day and mm. an infomercial interrupted my Judge Judy or whatever, whatever stupid show I was watching. And um, I was kind of irritated about that, but it it was the message that I needed. So a kind of a typical 
or, or a bad version of a kind of American diet. Um, it sounds like you weren't very active either. You were just watching TV and things like that all day long. Yes, at that at that point, I had gotten to that. I was active younger, mm -hmm. average active, not not athletic average, but I like to ride my bike and I like to water ski and snow ski and enjoy things like that. But I was still sick a lot, a lot, at least four or five times a year I was on antibiotics for an infection. And what was the kind of lowest point? I think I missed that. Like, what was the point where you thought I need to make a change? Yes. Yeah, so I, I did skip that part. So at 34, I had gotten my gallbladder removed and, and I was actually excited to get it removed because I thought that's why I had been sick for so long. Uh, you know, it didn't even occur to me. I was, it, and it's so bizarre to me that it didn't occur to me that it was my diet or my lifestyle or, or my thoughts, anything. It, it, you know, I needed a magic pill or I thought yeah. this was my magic pill. And, and so when I had it removed, I was even sicker and I knew that I was going to die. And, and that's, uh, after a month of, after it was removed, being sick and calling the doctor and, and the nurse told me, finally told me they were tired of me calling because I was so in so much pain and I was so sick. And I, she said, sometimes it takes people a year to recover from gallbladder surgery. Call us back if you're having trouble then. And I hung up the phone and I knew I wasn't going to make it a year. Wow. Mm -hmm. And that's where I, re that was my bottom. That's, that's when I started praying. <laughs> right. And I was actually a proclaimed agnostic until then. <laughs> so. <laughs> so you had these uh, physical issues, but I believe that you also had a, um, there was a mental health component to your journey as well. Yes, I was diagnosed uh, several things. It depended on the doctor. Uh, bipolar, uh, well, it was manic, but, and then manic got switched the name got switched to bipolar mm -hmm. and then schizophrenia, schizoaffective disorder. I believe that's all, Ma you know, major depressed. I was severely depressed and I was uh, taking medication for depression. I never took the schizophrenia, schizophrenia medication um, because it, it, that really scared me to, to go that far. So. And how common are those uh, those uh, conditions? In worldwide? Well, what in, do you in mean? The, I guess in the, in the US. That's very common. Um, I would say um, over half have severe depression or are, are diagnosed with severe depression. Wait a minute, over ha half of all people? Yes, I that, and that's a guess. I'm not uh, a statistics expert, mm -hmm, but, mm -hmm. but it's a it's a large it's a large number. It's a large, yes, very large. Jeez. So, um, and let let's let's go further. So you started to basically wake up to the idea that maybe there was some other way of dealing with your health issues rather than going to conventional medicine. What are the steps along that journey before you kind of? Uh, fully committed to changing your lifestyle? Uh, so, well, when I, when I had that day that I ate all raw and I woke up the next day feeling so good and I, I knew I had my answer, then I would go for a time and I would eat raw, but I didn't understand the calorie difference and, you know, I had to get enough calories in to sustain this life. And mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I would be so hungry after a few days and then I would just cook up some whole food do di I mean dish like you know baked potatoes or you know whole grain spaghetti or something like that and yeah, yeah. I would I would I would have to go back to bed for the day it would I would feel so awful and my body was so damaged at that point mm -hmm. that it just couldn't tolerate any any of this heavy dense foods it needed the light energy the 
foods that digested themselves basically with all the vitamins and minerals and uh you know yeah. sun food <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. and so yeah. i um i went through that pattern for about six months and it's hard to remember the exact timeline because it was you know 14 years ago november 2006 and so i uh but it was around six months and then i just decided i'm tired of going back to bed i know how to feel good i know this food makes me feel good i'm just gonna eat and eat and eat until i'm not hungry and which is what you're supposed to do but i had no books no raw food friends nothing i and i didn't even have internet i was so poor from being sick and broke and mm -hmm. um, so i just started eating like i would eat half a watermelon and i'd go well i'm still hungry and i'd eat the other half and i was eating and eating and eating non-stop all day just eating and my health just kept getting better and better and the weight was just coming off and i didn't even care about the weight I never cared about being overweight. I always said, people don't have to look at me if they don't like it. I didn't care, but the weight was coming off. And then I started walking and then I started bicycling. And then I really fell in love with bicycling. Um, and eventually a few years later went bicycle only for seven years. Um, wow. And, but I, my health just, it, I just, and my, my, so going back after about two weeks or more around that time of being a hundred percent raw my mind became clear and my thoughts were so crisp and clear and there wasn't that chaos going on in my inside of my head and then i realized wow i i don't need this medication anymore and so i stopped taking it i was taking a drug called effexor and i was on the highest dose and i stopped taking it cold turkey which i do not recommend <laughs> because i was very sick but i knew it was the medicine the withdrawals from the medicine making me sick and um so it was about three months of being having night sweats and night terrors and vertigo and a lot of withdrawal symptoms like that. Uh, it was about three months, but during that three months, I would get glimpses of feeling amazing and I knew I was on the right path. And mm -hmm. so I just stuck with it. But now I know that that could have actually killed me, but obviously it wasn't my time, so. Yeah, so you, you talked about the, this chaos going on in your mind. What was that like? Oh, it was, it was miserable, horrible suffering. It was always these, this, uh, voices of telling me these horrible things about myself and about other people. And, and, um, it was like, there was a fog in my head. Nothing, there was no clarity. There was no joy. There was no, you know, spark in there. It was just like, I was living life in this cloudy fog and i i didn't i was i i didn't talk to people i was very antisocial uh -huh. because i was always awkward in social groups i didn't get how to behave around people and um it was it was just a horrible life of suffering and misery yep and 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 that started to clear Kind of yes. Like the moment that you started to make change towards, was it a fully right. raw diet you did at first? I did. A, when I went fully raw, I went fully raw. And, and then I was eating just fruit, 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 because I didn't know anything else. And I did that for, I'm, I'm going to say about six months, if I remember correctly. Uh -huh. And then I started to meet raw food people locally, um, which I was in lived in a pretty small area where there's not a large population of Boise, Idaho. Uh, wow. It's a lot bigger now, but it's still small compared to big metropolis areas. And so I started to meet these raw food people and they're like, oh, you don't need to be eating that watermelon. Here's some, some raw pizza and here's this <laughs> you know, <laughs> raw tacos and all that. And I was so excited because I mean, there were days where 
I would be eating my watermelon just sobbing because I wanted my double bacon cheeseburger that I was so used to, you know? And mm. um, so I was like, oh, I can have my cake and eat it too, kind of thing, you know? And so I started eating this really dense nut-based food and I started to not thrive again. My mind was getting all chaotic again and I was depressed again and the clarity was gone. And I was like, what's going on? I'm eating a raw food diet. Where can I go from here? And I was actually invited to co-teach this class with the lady on raw food. And so I was teaching the class and towards the end of the class, I just, I go, I told everybody, I go, I have to be honest with you. I believe raw food is the best food to eat on the planet, but I'm not thriving. I was, and now I'm not. And a lady in the group goes, read this book. And she gave me the 801010 book. Right. And so I read that book and, um, and her name is Michelle Martinez. And she's, uh, I believe she's on YouTube as the fruit doctor at this yeah. time. And um, so I read 801010, and then I, it, I realized that's how I had been eating at first, unknowingly. Right. Um, and so I went back to a high fruit-based diet and immediately was, was back on top, back thriving again. Awesome. Um, I want to talk to you about the, uh, the going back to the voices in the head and stuff like that, if that's okay. Yes, that's fine. Do you think that there's a, a what was, what's the connection there? Why do you think diet is playing a part in that? Do you, what, what's the connection do you think between that and why was, or what do you think that is when people have that experience? Well, again, this is just a guess because I'm not a medical expert and, and, uh -huh. and I don't think medical experts really even know. Right. Um, so this is just from my experience, but I, I, yeah, all of that toxic food, my body was suffering. And anytime our body is suffering, our mind also suffers because they're, they're, the, they're one and the same. They're all connected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so my body was fogged up, so to speak. And so was my mind. And so when I went to the raw food diet, my body was cleansing and then my blood was running fast and I wasn't, you know, my body wasn't sluggish and therefore my mind was not sluggish either. Right. Right. Yeah. It's, um, it, it's, it's interesting to think whether that's, if everyone would have that experience or, you know, if, if a lot of people would have that experience of diet is so closely linked. Um, there's, there's definitely, so uh, there's definitely a link in that mm -hmm. because I, through the years, I started a, a coaching business on people with mental illness mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's, and I still continue to do it. I, I've also added in changing our thought process as well. Um, but it's so much easier to change our thought process when we have clarity in the mind than when we have fog in the mind. Right. And so, um, but through the years of counseling people, most people wouldn't do what I recommended, but there are a few that did do it and they all keep in touch with me and they're all thriving. Excellent. They all have the same results I did. Yeah, yeah. Did you do anything on top of that? Did you do other practices? Did you consciously try and change your thoughts, anything like that? Not at first, mm -hmm. not at first. And then I, and I would still have my, ups and downs but it was so so much less yeah. than before and then I and actually just recently this year 2020 I call it the year of consciousness <laughs> is I really even I, I mean it's just a constant uh, expansion that we go through in life and and this year has been a huge expansion but through the years I have worked on my thought process but it but I was able to do that because I had the clarity mm -hmm. uh, to be able to do that. But what, what I started out with was giving myself 30 day challenges of things that I feared and I was scared of people. And mm -hmm. so um, 
I, my, my most memorable one where it really transformed me was I said for 30 days, I'm going to introduce myself to three new people a day. Wow. Just walk up and introduce myself. And I was wow. terrified because people were scary. And yeah. so I did that. And it was about halfway through that month that I realized there's nothing scary about this at all. These people <laughs> love it when you're interested in them. Yeah. They like it when you want to talk to them. They like it when you want to know about them. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. the fear just left. I, you know, and, and ever since then, I've just been a social butterfly. People do not scare me and I love people. It, mm-hmm. and, uh, they have negative energy. That means they're suffering. That means they need love. And, yeah. um, so even negative energy doesn't bother me, you know? And um, so that I did that, you know, and I do 30 days of giving three people a hug a day, you know, different things. And then I started studying Ma- Marshall Rosen- Rosenberg. Mm. I believe I'm not correct about the... Um, uh, uh, Nonviolent communication. Nonviolent communication. Yes, thank you. And so I started practicing daily gratitudes, which I still continue that to this day. And uh, so I started doing that. Uh, but I still struggled with my relationships and communication and and things like that. Just as you know, I'm a human. You know? <laughs> so and and. Uh, the stuff that help and so th- this year has been the year where I've started s- really studying conscious language and um and and really being able to be the master of my thoughts being the master of what I create in my life realizing that I am my creator mm. and and so um it continues. The journey continues. Um, but also, I, I am not 100% raw anymore. Sure. And it, it's not because I don't believe all raw works. It's because I feel just as good eating some steamed foods, and I enjoy them. And so I listen to my body. If I eat something and I feel that heavy yuckiness, then... I let it go and and uh, but I've experimented over the years you know mm-hmm. what does this mm-hmm. feel like what does this make me feel like and so I eat mostly raw and I have a little bit of cooked um, and it's not even every day it's so okay. um, let me ask you about um, when you, you heard about 8 to 10 10 but you also ended up did you go to one of Doug's retreat so how did that work out yes yes so i i actually for three or four years i went to doug's retreats the first time i went to the first raw food uh big event i went to was a health and fitness camp at uh with um doug Mm -hmm. doug grant and so that was really amazing uh, for me, just connecting to people, and Robbie Barbero was there, and all these people that I'd seen on the internet. You know, I was like, "Oh, yeah. they're real!" And um, yeah, and the interview you saw with Durian Rider, that was at, you were right. That was at Health and Fitness um, mm-hmm. as well. But that was a couple. I'd been a couple years going to the retreats, so I went to that for about four years. And then I did three Woodstock fruit festivals in a row, the first one, and then two years after that. But then I just became really comfortable in myself and Mm -hmm. my lifestyle. And I really didn't need to be, have that boost of being around people eating the same as me. And of Mm -hmm. course, I always enjoy being around people like that. I've made lifelong friends and, um, people come to visit me that are raw foodies and I go to visit them and you know, there's still a wonderful connection, but I just started, I wanted to travel and, and those happened during growing season. I got this passion for growing 
food, especially planting fruit trees. And so um, I didn't want to miss out on my crops while I was at the mm. fruit festivals, you know. Mm. <laughs> so, <laughs> I quit going <laughs> because I had different priorities. Um, but that brings me to another phase in my life of uh, where I had a big awakening on my purpose, part of my purpose. Mm -hmm. And I was, I had been eating raw for a while and I was on a walk eating an apple. And I, all of a sudden I just, was filled with this gratitude for this apple like this i mm -hmm. i'd never felt such an amazing amount of gratitude for this apple and i was i just felt my knees just so grateful for this apple and that it not only kept me alive but i was thriving from this energy from this beautiful fruit and i just had this whole vision of my purpose is to spread this energy i am the plant fruit trees and and everywhere you mm. know that was my deal i am to spread this energy and plant fruit trees and so that's what i began doing and i continue to this day but i i filled my yard with fruit trees and when it was full I would buy fruit trees and I was bicycle only at that time. So I'd have them in my bike trailer. I could usually get two or three in there at a time. And I would drive around and I would knock on doors and I would say, I have a peach tree out here that I bought for you. Where would you like me to plant it? <laughs> and, and people would go, Oh, <laughs> and there was only one person that didn't want me to plant a, a tree in their yard. And these were strangers, people I didn't know. I would just, feel wow. called to stop here and knock on their door and you know i'd see their yard oh they need a fruit tree and mm -hmm. and so all over boise idaho there are fruit trees uh that i planted and um i now live in texas uh mainly because of the longer growing season was my purpose for moving farther south um wow. so that was a big that was a big shift in my life as well and uh and since then i've had other visions of my purpose my my main purpose which uh -huh. includes the fruit trees is a giver of love i am a giver of love and that is my purpose and anytime i stray from that then there's suffering in my life and and that's okay i just remember oh yes i'm being cruel to this person my purpose is to be a giver of love let's do that so right um so yeah that's that's great yes so um the you're in texas what's what what kind of fruits are you growing what do you enjoy growing and um is, is do you find it quite easy to to grow these fruits oh texas is great and i actually live in it's growing it's called growing zone 8b where i can grow uh i'm about an hour away from being able to grow citrus. I, I missed moving far enough. <laughs> wow. But I love where I'm at, I'm not moving. <laughs> so, but I, I grow figs and persimmon and um, peaches, plums, pears, pomegranate, mulberries. I'm, I'm going through all my trees. Uh, pawpaws and olives and yeah that covers most of them <laughs> <laughs> but i'm out of friends actually right now and she's got oranges on her tree and i'm just waiting for those oranges to get ripe so <laughs> for people that have never grown fruit before do you think it's like a, a difficult thing to do is it quite easy do you have any problems or challenges with it I believe growing, planting trees is easier than having a garden. Uh -huh. uh, of course, I lose trees. You know, I plant them and they die. And, oh, well, I'll just buy more. Um, but it's, if, you, if you plant the, a tree that's it, um, 
appropriate for the climate you're in, it's really easy to maintain them, mm-hmm. you know, water them and fertilize them if they need it. Uh, I find it very simple to do. Sure. It, it, I, but I have that in me where it's just like, oh, it's, it just works out. I just, I just know it's, it's going to work out and it does. Um, yeah, I sort of feel like people think there's a lot of maintenance involved, and there really, there really isn't. There's not much to do. Yeah. Uh, and if you plant, um, yeah, right. If you plant it like permaculture, you don't do mono mm-hmm. crops like orchards, then you really don't get the diseases. And every once in a while, I get a, something aphids on there, but but everything's so balanced in my yard that. You know, a week later, I look and it's the aphids are all gone because something got them, probably ladybugs. Right, and, right. And yeah. so, um, and and the garden is, you know, I also garden and I have an amazing winter garden here in Texas. It's really fun, uh, but the garden gets stuff on it too. But I also, you know, if I lose it, well, we'll just do it again next year. You know, I realize well these. This didn't work. I'm going to try it over here with these plants and see if we get a better outcome. And but really, I fail, failure doesn't bother me in gardening. I fail. Okay, well, I'm going to try it a different way. Excellent, excellent. Um, so you mentioned that you started to help people out at one point with a little bit of coaching, consulting, stuff like that. Um, yes. How did that, how did you start to do that? Did people start reaching out to you or how, how did that process start? Well, really, yeah, I really started with, uh, during writer's video, uh, people would contact me and I still, I still do it. And um, so then I started my website and I started the coaching. And of course I was really like, not really very good at it at first, but as I do, I just continue trying. <laughs> and so I, um, now I really, I, I, and it was, I was scared, you know, what do I tell these people? Uh, but now that I've been doing it for a while, I can hear the codes. I can, I, you know, it, it's a natural process for me and I, and I love it and I don't promote it. I, I tried promoting it for a while and it didn't feel right. It didn't feel comfortable. And, because I was feel you know, I was I was going out there instead of having people come to me and um and I found if I go out then people don't really want what I have to offer. When they come to me they do want what I have to offer. And so I just let people come to me and I they do. So you're still doing that now? Yes, I am. And how would people find out more about you or contact you or um, where's your information at? Well, I have it on my website, sort of. Mostly my website's my blog, and which I don't even do much anymore because out where I live, I only have 3G Wi-Fi. You know, I don't have Wi-Fi. I have 3D um, data. So mm-hmm. um, I don't do much on there anymore. But I know it's it'll that'll change as well. But they there's information on there. But or they can just uh, email me mm-hmm. at embracingyourjoy at gmail dot com, or they can find me on um, Facebook. So. And it's Victoria Everett Saint Saint John. Well, it was Saint John, but I just got married this year, and so now it's Victoria Everett Collins. Okay. Um, but either way, um, and really, if you just look up Victoria Everett, I have it as that. If you type in crazy banana lady on the, on an internet search, I will show up. (laughs) (laughs) There's that. (laughs) Yeah. Um, so you're out in Texas now and, uh, what, what, for people who are beginning on this journey, um, what would be your, your best piece of advice? Well, I would say keep at it and definitely connect with people that can Mm -hmm. encourage you and get a coach to, to 
somebody to help you with your accountability, help you get into your will and, and also help you with your thought process because a lot, well, really the reason we even succumb to failure and hopelessness and all that is because we are, we believe that that's our outcome. We, you know, so changing our thought process saying, I, I am, I do have the ability to heal. I am available to yeah. heal. Yeah. And just open yourself to, to knowing that you always can heal. You know, people have healed not being on a raw diet. Uh, people have healed. Uh, I, I lis listened to an audio book a few years ago of a, a her name's Anita. I, I choose to remember her last name, but she was on her deathbed with cancer and she went in a near death experience and, and was surrounded by love. And she realized that love is what's going to cure her. And so she went back into her body and she understood pure love, pure unconditional love. And she was miraculously healed and she didn't even do anything change her diet in any way so you know love can conquer all you know right. love is the answer <laughs> but giving food putting food inside your body love food um fruit i is amazing because it's the only food on the planet that we don't take it's a gift to wow. us the trees gift it to us and so when you're putting this gift into your body you know and the trees are like take me spread my seeds you know that's how their seeds get spread is by giving this gift um so you put this gift of love into your body and then then you feel that love and your body starts to heal amazing yeah so what's what do you think is the next stage in your journey at the moment Oh, there's always going to be a new stage, <laughs> but I, right now where I'm at, I realize through my thoughts and my words, I'm, I'm very um, wise about what I speak out. Mm -hmm. Do I speak out fear? Do I speak out love? And so I'm just continuing with that expansion. I, I realize there's no there's no end to how much joy I can experience. You know, I'll reach where I'm like, oh, this is, this is joy. Like this is the joy. And then a month later, I reach a new level of joy. And so <laughs> I'm like, and then I realize, well, there's no end. I can just reach more and more levels of joy and awareness and consciousness. And so that's it, you know. I'm going to reach the highest level I can reach until my life is over and continue on. Excellent. So uh, before we bring this to a, to a close today, what would be some of your sort of final thoughts for, for people listening? Well, just, I would say, have confidence in yourself, have confidence in your ability to heal. Mm ask and you will receive ask for answers and they will come to you and yeah the, the hopelessness and failure will only bring more hopelessness and failure and and it's okay to be like that but there's a part of us that all we all know that we have this power within us to heal and so do whatever it takes to connect to that power Thank you very much, Victoria, for joining us today on the Love Fruit podcast. And just to remind everyone, if you want to get in touch with Victoria, you can go to, you can search for Crazy Banana Lady. You'll probably find her, but also you can email her at embrace, embracingyourjoy at gmail.com. And she's also on Facebook. And um, yeah, if you enjoyed this interview, this podcast, feel free to share it with other people or um, rate it, comment. Feel free to provide us with feedback. You can email us at info at fruitfest.co.uk. If you want to join our newsletter to get more uh, notifications, you can go to fruitfest.co.uk to join the newsletter there. 
And uh, thank you very much for joining us in today's episode of the Love Fruit Podcast.